Hello, I am One Eye, one of Cosmos Here's architects designing ships for the Steam release, um, which is why my game may look different than yours. This power and logistics guide is meant to be very general, so if you are playing after the Steam release or before it, it should still apply. Um, however, if you want uh, guides that are maybe more up to date or on other topics, then feel free to check the description below. So the first thing I want to talk about is reactor sizes because this is probably one of the most important pieces of information in the entire game. Um, so here I have an example of the power and cost equivalents between all the different reactor sizes. So on the power side, three small reactors produces the same amount of power as one medium reactor. Three mediums the same amount as one large. Um, and so that means that nine small reactors produces the same amount of power as one large reactor. However, on the cost side, a medium reactor only costs as much as two small reactors, and a large only as much as three. So that means if you had a ship that used all small reactors and you switched it to all large reactors, you would be cutting the costs incurred by reactors alone by two-thirds. Um, and that's not all the costs that it would cut, as I will be talking about next. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about is battery sizes. Each of the different reactor sizes produces a different size battery as well. So the small reactor produces one size batteries, the medium reactor produces two size batteries, and the large reactor produces three size batteries. And these are technically called battery packs. So one crew member can carry a single battery pack, which means that if they're carrying a triple size battery pack, they can effectively carry three batteries, or three single size battery packs. So that means that crew are three times more efficient at carrying power uh, with large reactors, and two times more efficient with medium ones. And that means that you can power things from a much further distance, and also you just need less crew to power the same amount of things. So you can think of the crew that is needed to fully utilize your reactors as part of the reactor's cost, which is why being more efficient, the crew being more efficient with larger reactors, further increases their cost efficiency. Um, and you should always try to fully utilize your reactors, because they're one of the most expensive parts in the game. Here I have an example where everything but the reactor sizes is the same, um, and I'll just auto-fire these lasers, and you can see the difference. Technically, a small reactor cannot fully power two lasers, but since the amount of crew is not draining the reactor, it does not matter. So you can see the efficiency difference. Um, the same number of crew is able to keep these fully powered, these mostly powered, and these barely powered over this distance. So when should you switch to a larger reactor size? Uh, that really depends on the ship. Um, but as I was saying before, you want to be utilizing, to be fully utilizing all the power that your reactor produces. Um, so when you can see that your reactor has that out of power symbol on it, and your other parts um, are running out of power as well, then you know that it's an issue with not having enough power production. If your parts are running out of power, but your reactor does not have that symbol over it, it means that there's an issue with your logistics or the number of crew that you're using. So keep that in mind whenever you're deciding to switch to a larger reactor size. But generally, under like 100, 100 to 150,000, you're going to be sticking with small reactors. Around 200 to, to 500,000, you're going to be in, uh, using medium reactors, and then above that, you're going to be using large reactors. Um, but again, that is a very general. Um, statement, so if your ship uh, is having issues or depending on if you're using energy weapons, then of course you're going to be switching to a larger reactor size sooner. So the next thing I want to talk about is distance and room types. So your crew move at different speeds depending on what type of room they're walking through. So if they're walking through any normal room that is not corridor or moving walkway, they move at 50% speed. However, if they're walking through a corridor, they move at 100% speed in any direction. And if they're walking on moving walkways, 
Then move 200% speed forward in the direction of the walkway, 75% speed to the sides, and 25% speed in reverse against the walkway. So that's why you'll see these double walkway setups. Um, but yeah, so it makes a very big difference. Um, and you want to be using these two-way moving walkways on larger ships pretty much anywhere you can, um, except for in specific situations or if your uh, thing is close enough to use a few tiles of corridor. Um, this is best for long distances because it takes time for the crew to maneuver across and it's slower again walking across. So in this example, um, you can see, I also have an adjacent example here, um, that each of these setups has a different number of crew that it needs uh, to sustain the ions. So adjacent, one crew quarters can power and, and uh, operate two ions. Um, however, with these moving walkways, it takes, and a seven tile distance, it takes two crew bunks as well as the crew quarters. Um, and with just corridor, it takes another two crew on top of that. And then you can see that this one uh, is not fully sustaining. You'll see that it will run out of power every so often, it'll flicker. Um, even though it has three crew quarters, and you can see that there are even crews still in the crew quarters. Um, and that's just because each part can only draw a certain amount of crew to help supply it. So it's already hit that max. Um, and it's still not getting fully powered because the speed of the rooms that the crew are walking through is uh, too slow. Um, so you never want to be powering things through rooms that take a lot of power. Like control rooms and stuff are pretty much the only exception to that. Um, but stuff that is very power hungry, uh, you never want to be powering through rooms. Um, and yeah, you always want to have them adjacent if possible. So yeah, that's the basics of crew speed. So the next few sections are going to be on a little more of an advanced topic. So if you want to skip that, then this video should have chapters and you can just do that below. However, I do recommend sticking around because crew management is a very useful skill. So first of all, I'm going to talk about crew assignment, which is the most basic form of crew management. Um, so in this setup here, or these three setups, uh, the only difference, uh, except for this, is uh, in crew uh, assignment. So if we let this run, you can see that this left one most this leftmost one flickers quite a bit. The rightmost one flickers sometimes, and then the middle one does not flicker at all. Um, and they'll have the same amount of crew, and that's only because of uh, crew management differences. So why that is um, is because of what we talked about before, which is the movement speed in different rooms. Without any crew assignment, the crew that are over here can be on, on one side of the reactor, can be called to the other side of the reactor to do a job. So like supply this ion emitter, for example, um, which means that they have to walk around the entire reactor after grabbing power, which is a normal room. So the crew move speed is 50%. However, with crew assignment, you can set this up so that they only walk the same path over and over again. And that's the essence of crew management, is that your crew will always walk the same most efficient path and never have to do any other job. Because if they're walking the same path, then um, they won't be spending any extra time moving through unoptimal rooms or even moving through corridors and stuff that they don't need to be doing um, to get to another job. So even if your your ship was entirely made of corridors, um, your crew could move anywhere they pleased uh, at full move speed, it would still be efficient to use crew assignment because any extra time spent walking is time spent not powering things or supplying things with resources. So that is the essence of crew management. Um, and assignment is a very simple way to do that. So as you can see here, we have, if you remember, one crew quarters can supply uh, two ions that are adjacent to a large reactor. So that's what we have here. Uh, and then only one extra bunk was needed for uh, these 
ions that are a few tiles of moving walkways away. So that's the difference between these two. And then this one, it does use a roll. So this is a, probably the most basic roll, which is just an operator. Um, and you can easily set this up by just right clicking on the different priorities here. Um, that just means that it only operates things, so nothing else, but you can right click on all the parts that you want them to, to operate and to assign them to those parts. Uh, and then you can just put the crew quarters or the, the crew rooms themselves anywhere on your ship, so out of the way. Usually, sometimes they're used as armor, um, or just placed at the back, or even just ejected from the ship entirely. Then they just work as operators. Uh, and then you can put your crew that are actually doing things, like supplying, closer to your, your reactors, um, or whatever you're using them for. Um, in this case, it doesn't really, uh, they aren't really any closer, and it's actually less efficient because they still have to walk at maximum four tiles inside the reactor. Um, but a lot of times you'll be, uh, you'll have very limited space and then using operators is a very handy way of freeing up space for more useful crew near the stuff that they need to be doing. That's these three setups here, but I do want to talk about something real quick, and that is two things. First, that you can assign parts themselves, so you can assign reactors, factories, and storages, and second, that depending on what you assign your crew to, they'll do different things. So if you assign them to consumers, such as weapons, control rooms, or engine rooms, they will both operate those parts and supply them with any resources that they need. And they will only supply them from parts that are assigned to them. In the case of assigning them to reactors, they will power anything that the reactor can power. Or if the reactor is assigned to something, then they will only power those things that the reactor is assigned to. If the crew are assigned to a storage, they will both supply the storage with anything that it can store, and but only from things that are assigned to it, so this reactor is assigned to the storage. If there's nothing assigned to the storage, then it, they will get resources from anywhere it can. And they will also supply anything that the storage is assigned to, or anything that it can supply. If they are assigned to factories, which I will not be going uh, into any examples of that in this video because that is outside the scope of uh, power logistics, and it's also different between the classic and steam release versions, it's similar to the storage in that they will both supply it with any resources that it needs, along with power and will supply anything that it is assigned to, or if it's not assigned to anything, will apply, supply anything that it can. In the next section, I'll be going into a simple supply route, which this is actually already a supply route, um, and I'll be going into the different uh, crew roles that you'll use for that. All right, so now onto that basic supply route example that I was talking about before. In this case, it's just one power storage, which is called a power buffer. Um, that is right next to the things that it is powering. These are only really used for shields and point defense, though sometimes they're used for other things, especially if uh, you have a burst damage um, ship that uses them like behind lasers or something, and you don't have enough uh, power generation to supply them. And sometimes when things are really far away, you use a storage buffer, but usually it's best to power everything um, except point defense even shields uh, if they're closer directly from a large reactor. Um, but in this case, it is, uh, it is better than um, powering directly at this distance. So here I have a example. I can do this test here. Um, and you should see that the, this, uh, these shields come online uh, beforehand. So both of them came online um, before these came online. Sometimes it's more pronounced and they came back online before these. Other times it isn't. But in this case, it does make a difference. So, how this is done um, is similar to the last example with crew assignment. But this also includes uh, reactor and storage assignment and different roles. So, this reactor is assigned to only power this storage, so it will not ever be powering these, so you don't have to worry about when you assign crew to 
supply power that they would uh, power it from the reactor. Um, and then this storage supplies to the shields, um, and it will only power the shields. So you can see that a supply route is generated here, so reactor to storage and then storage to shields. But we need crew specifically for doing each leg of this route though. Because as I talked about before, crew management is about minimizing unnecessary travel time. So if these crew down here were, were able to uh, power these shields up here, then they'd have to walk all the way up here to start doing that, which takes a long time. Um, and if these crew uh, could power this, could supply this storage, then they'd have to go all the way down here first before they could bring power back up. So you want to only have your crew do one thing. Again, it, it minimizes unnecessary travel time. So um, these crew are power distributors, um, and that role is they only supply power to things um, and operate fire extinguishers. And so they will not supply storages. And so you could assign this to the power storage, but you could also assign it to the shields. Um, in this case, I'm just going to assign it to the shields. And this right here is a storage supply, a storage supply roll. So it only supplies storages, as the name suggests, um, with a very high priority. So you can assign it to the storage. Um, in this case, you can assign it to both the reactor and the storage, but again, if this reactor was supplying other storages, then these crew could walk across the reactor and that would be unnecessary travel time. So you want to, again, uh, only assign them to the things that you want them to power. Um, so in this case, this one storage here. So now that we have that set up, what if I wanted a laser blaster as well? So this is where an optional role that I use comes in. So this reactor helper role down here. Um, you do not need it. You could just power uh, everything with a uh, specialized storage supply and power distributor crew. In this case, we need crew to operate and supply this, this weapon here. But, so we'd need to add more uh, power distributor crew here. And then probably and some operator crew too. Um, so that would be one way to do it. You could also make this quarters here a reactor helper um, and assign it to both the storage and the weapon. In this case, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to make them also operate the weapon, but again, operators are handy. This is uh, where you'd use them. And then also, you would need to set them to not supply shields. Because again, if you assign them to storage, they will both supply stuff from the storage and also supply the storage. So they would supply the shields, even if you didn't assign them to the shields. Um, in this case, we also need to assign the reactor, but then after that is done, it should work. And you can see it's shooting now. So in this case, now we've set up something that supplies both storages and some other parts. Um, but you gotta be careful when you're using this because you can quite easily miss something and then have your crew uh, be doing things you don't want them to. So for most situations, again, I'd stick to just using uh, storage supply and power distributors and operators. Before we go on to the next section, I do want to clarify something about the interaction between assignment and roles. So when you assign crew two parts, they take precedence for any jobs related to those parts. So whether that be operating or supplying to or from those parts. So if I assign these crew to these lasers, uh, you can see that they will go and replace the operators from the other crew room. Um, and if I auto fire the lasers, then you can see that they will also go out of their room first before any of the other crew um, to supply the lasers. Now, if you have multiple rooms assigned, then it's the roles, uh, the priorities in the crew's roles that uh, determine the precedence. So now that I've made one a power distributor, if I auto fire them again, since the power distributor role has a higher priority, you see that they go out of their room to supply power first. And if no crew uh, rooms are assigned, then again, it's the roles that take priority. 
So anyway, that's been a basic introduction to crew management. If you want more information or want to see how to do crew management for a number of different setups and weapons, then you can check out my written crew management guide in the description. It should be up to date. Anyway, now on to some actual ship examples. Alright, so now what I'm going to be doing is showing how you can apply everything I've talked about in the previous sections to an actual ship, plus a few other things. So, the first thing you might notice with this ship is that it's using three small reactors, and as the first section went over, um, this can be turned into one medium reactor without any downsides, and it's going to be cheaper. So yeah, it just I did that here. This is the um, improved version. The second thing I want to talk about is every single space that can have a door has a door. I mean, that's not a good thing because doors are expensive. They just co they cost just as much as an entire corridor tile, and they also spread fires. So fires cannot spread through walls, but they can spread through doors. So it just makes it a little bit harder to stop fires and is more expensive. So what you really want to be doing, uh, you also don't want to have auto door on. So go into the settings and don't have auto door on, um, which is this setting right here, because it often creates unoptimal doors. So like it might create a door here for the shield. And obviously that's an extra two tiles of walking um, compared to a door here. So, um, and you can see the line that it creates from a supplier so that you can see the closest power source. So yeah, that's something to note. So that's the second improvement that's been made, um, is all the doors are placed manually. Another thing you might notice is that it has these power storages here that are uh, right next to and actually in front of the reactors. Um, and so that's not really doing anything because uh, and, and I mean, as I said before, how power storages are usually used is put up near the consumers uh, and called a storage buffer, you know, so that is where I'd put them if I put them there. Um, and in, in this case, it could be helpful, but on this version, I decided not to. Definitely just don't put them in front of your reactors like this or just around your uh, power generation because, first of all, it makes it harder to get power out of the reactors. Um, and also, they're going to use these up first. If you don't have any crew assignment, they're going to use these up first, and then they aren't going to refill them the entire battle. So they're just going to be uh, an extra room to walk through, and that's extra time spent moving, which is just bad. Um, yeah, so instead, I, I'm going to replace it with a medium reactor, and then it's, uh, it's closer to all the things that it powers. So these reactors are that many tiles away from the shields, whereas this reactor is adjacent to them, um, and only two tiles away from the next shield, and only a few tiles away from the lasers. So uh, try to minimize the distance that your reactor uh, is from all the things it needs to power, and have the crew be able to walk through corridors getting there. Um, and if this was a bigger ship, you'd use the two-way moving walkways. So another thing um, that's changed is that there's a power storage behind the point defense. So as I talked about before, power storage buffers are often used for point defense, um, and this is an example of that. So it has also the same thing we uh, went over in the last section uh, with power storage buffers and crew distributors, which are assigned to all the things that the power storage is also assigned to, as you can see and then the reactor is assigned to everything but these things that the power storage is uh, assigned to. Uh, this doesn't have to do with crew management or power, um, but a lot more armor has been added in front of the reactor. So just always good to have armor in front of your vulnerable components. And so those are all the major changes. Um, actually, one more thing I want to go over is this reactor helper. So. Uh, as I went over in the last section, uh, it, this uses a reactor helper to to power the power storage. You could break it up into a dedicated storage supply group, but uh, this would be overkill, so you'd have to make it uh, like three bunks or something, which is uh, slightly more expensive and stuff, so uh, instead I set up this version of the reactor helper role, uh, which does not power standard thrusters, because this, this power storage powers a standard thruster, and does not power point defense. 
um, and then you can just safely assign it to the power storage and it will not supply the things that the power storage is assigned to, but it will supply the storage itself and everything else that you've assigned it to. Um, the, the one thing with that is that since this power storage supplies a uh, standard thruster, I have not assigned it to any other standard thrusters because it won't be able to power them. Uh, instead, this normal power distributor crew is doing that. So this next part is a do-it-yourself example. So I should have posted the ship file in the description. You should be able to download it and then get to this point, or you can just copy it from this image. Either way is fine, but uh, when I tell you to, you can pause the video and then try to lay out the power and crew logistics yourself. Um, and then when you're done, you can come back to this video uh, and then I will do it live and you can see uh, what I would do. So when you're ready, you can pause the video now. All right, hope that went well. So first we're gonna start out with a large reactor here. Um, you might have noticed the shape of the ions. It was kind of a hint. And we can put a corridor here, the doors to the ions. So I do this layout um, when I'm connecting a two-way conveyor to a reactor or storage or something. And then for this, uh, for this thruster block, we only need a single corridor line. The two-way conveyor is overkill there. And so you might have also noticed that uh, a power storage can fit here. So we're going to be using a power, power storage buffer. And I'm just feeding off a corridor line here because it would be more complicated to try to fit in um, conveyors here. You could also do this. It wouldn't be wouldn't be bad either. You could also do this. In fact, I'm actually gonna, just going to do this. Anyway, so that's all the corridors laid out. So now for the crew. Um, so I'm going to think about how much crew I need. So as we saw before, one crew quarters can power two ions and operate them. So we'll do that'll be for those middle four ions. Um, and then we also have shields um, and this thruster block and these two more ions here to power. So a little these will need a little over one crew or one crew quarters to power. So like a quarters and a half. Um, and then we also need to power all these shields and this thruster module, so I'll, I'll put another uh, crew quarters down there. Um, and then for down here, about the same thing, we also need to power all uh, the control room and these thrusters here. Um, so I'll just put three down. Um, and then one thing, other, to, other thing to think about is, so these engine rooms require in total six crew to operate. So I can put the operators up here, and I can set this as an operator role, and that will just free up more crew here uh, to be close to the reactor. And this control room, also uh, this uh, bridge, needs seven crew, so we can just put a crew quarters there, and that will deal with most of that. Um, and then I'll just put like some more fire extinguishers here. And that should be it. Actually, we need a airlock here. So now on to the crew assignment and management. We can first though see uh, how it does without any. So as you can see the ions are flickering and that's without setting the thrusters to auto fire as well, which we could do. And also the power storage is running out. So we'll start off with direct assignment. So we're going to assign these to that, uh, to those ions. And then for now we can just, well first we'll go down here and we can just assign these to everything down here. And you don't need to, ass to direct assign crew to uh, fire extinguishers, they will automatically um, go and get fire extinguishers anyway. Also, um, if you're playing uh, in post-classic, 
if all your crew have assignments, then they will not go and pick up resources uh, and drop them in, in storages. So there's that to, to keep in mind. But up here, we have basically the same situation, except we now have this storage to deal with. So I'm going to set these to power everything there. But now we need to set up a reactor helper role or a dedicated storage supply role. Um, but before we do that, we need to set these to power distributors and then assign them to the storage. And then we need to go here to assign the reactor. So then we just assign the reactor to everything that we want it to power. And as you can see, uh, there is a connection between these two sides. But now that we've assigned the reactor uh, to the stuff on one side, the crew will never try to power anything on the other side of the ship, uh, which is very handy. So now we need to set up this uh, storage supply or reactor helper. In this case, I'm going to choose a reactor helper. And actually, I might make two of them. And so we just have to set them to not power shields, not supply shields. And then we can get rid of these assignments and assign it to that storage there. And then they should uh, supply the storage with power. So now we'll see how this does. Oh, we forgot to do operators. You could do operators as well for all these ions here. Um, maybe not the middle ones, uh, since these are already efficient. Also, we forgot doors. So now we can auto-fire them and see how it does. Alright, so after a little bit, it looks like there's only a little bit of, of flickering, and it's mainly from crew, for some reason, uh, not operating the ions. And so you can go in here and see what the priorities are. So the operate priority is higher than the supply battery priority, but sometimes the game is weird like that. Anyway, so yeah, that's how I'd set this up, and a good thing to do is to just auto-fire um, everything at once and see how it does. And if, if you notice, the um, reactor is actually running out of power, and that's a good thing, because that means that you're utilizing all the potential power generation of this reactor, so you're getting all of its worth uh, in credits. So if you were not fully utilizing the reactor, then you'd be wasting money because you're paying for the power production that you're not using. And another thing to notice is that um, if I, you can center like this with Alt F, um, that the crew are barely moving across the reactor at all. So as you can see, the crew are only really moving here, although there was one guy who did go over here, um, and that's an issue. Oh, no, because we forgot to put an operator role. No. I forgot to make this guy an operator. So yeah, that's what that was. Um, but as you can see, they are not moving across the reactor because we've assigned them to one side of the reactor. Um, and the only, the furthest they will have to travel across the reactor is just here um, because we've assigned these crew um, to this engine room. And by the way, engine rooms will automatically distribute power to all connected thrusters, so you do not need to add doors to the thrusters. So, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you want any more resources, again, you can check the description below. Um, I also should have a link to the official Cosmeteer Discord server, as well as a, an unofficial one that I run called Excelsior, where you can find a bunch of example competitive ships, um, as well as some casual ones. If you're playing after the Steam release, so post-classic, then many of the built-in ships, uh, the faction ships, are also good examples of what I've discussed in this video. Otherwise, Excelsior is your best bet. We might also have a website soon, but no promises. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.